Perfect. It's you two. I have a commission here that has your names written all over it. In fact, I'd even go so far as to say you're the only ones for the job. The only ones for the job? Huh. If our help is really that important, it's probably some Archon class commission, right? <laughs> the Adventurous Guild doesn't employ that kind of classification system. In fact, this commission is also probably not nearly as intimidating as what you're expecting. All it asks us to do is to find the missing person. Huh? Then why did you say we were the only ones for the job? I came across this commission while reviewing our backlog not too long ago. It seems simple, but our records indicate that over a dozen successive efforts to complete it have all ended in failure, despite attempts by several accomplished and renowned adventurers. With the reputation of the Adventurers Guild and the performance of the Sumeru branch at stake, it's in our best interest to assign this commission to the adventurer with the highest completion rate over the past few years. Well, that's us for sure! <laughs> All I'm asking is for you to give it your best shot. If it proves to be beyond your capabilities as well, I'll talk to the commissioner about cancelling the commission. Okay, so who are we looking for? And what is it about this commission that's made it so hard to complete? This commission was jointly issued by the residents of Vimara Village. They say one of their own villagers has gone missing. But the problem is, they don't know the missing person's name. They can only provide information about his general appearance. Uh, they're all from the same village, but they don't even know his name? Hmm. If so many adventurers have failed to complete this commission, maybe this missing villager doesn't exist at all. Could it be some sort of a prank or something? Unlikely. Several villagers came by to issue the commission, and judging by their appearance and tone of voice, they seemed incredibly sincere. It certainly didn't seem like a joke to them. Besides, putting up a commission requires a processing fee. There aren't many upsides to a prank that costs Mora to carry out. In any case, it would probably be best to go to Vimara Village and ask around first. The Adventurous Guild does have some information on hand, but I would say anything you can learn directly from the villagers would be far more reliable. The best way to avoid misdirection is to go to the source. Alright then, let's go! Paimon's starting to get really curious about this whole thing. Into the shadows. Hello there. You looking to buy something? I do business in this area. Oh, no, no. We're adventurers. Catherine sent us to look into a commission here in Vermara Village. Ah, so you're here about that, then. Ah, you're not the first, that's for sure. We've certainly made a lot of trouble for you all. To be honest, we aren't holding out much hope. Many adventurers have made their way out here, confident they'd be able to help us, only to leave soon after with nothing to show for their efforts. We've pretty much had it up to here in questions, and the area around the village has practically been overturned in search of clues, but no one has been able to make any headway. So, this person we're looking for, what's his name? Where did he live? Does he have any relatives? Uh, I, I don't know. I really have no clue. I couldn't tell you. Okay, guess you are really sick of answering questions. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to sound short with you. I was actually just giving you my answer to your questions. I know it may seem like we don't have anything to offer by way of information, but I promise you, we all have a very strong impression of him. When you live in the same village as someone, you develop a lot of memories together, you know? We just don't know the specifics. Maybe we did at one point, but that information is long gone by now. At least that's what everyone in the village seems to think. We've all exchanged what we know, and that was the only logical conclusion. All right. Specifics aside, then, what kind of person was he? Young guy. In his early 20s, probably. Incredibly kind sort of person, always willing to lend a helping hand. 
I chat with him when I didn't have any customers. I even saw him stick out his neck for others on more than one occasion. <laughs> Very interesting guy, that one. Now that you've started talking about him, you don't seem nearly as down in the dumps as you did before. Seems like he left a pretty good impression on you. But of course, everyone in the village is pretty fond of him. We wouldn't have issued that commission otherwise. There aren't many young people like him nowadays, so genuine and pure. To think that he just up and disappeared one day, I just hope nothing bad happened. Could he have just moved away without telling anyone? No, he's not the type to leave without saying goodbye. And anyway, moving away without being seen by a single person in the village? There's no way he would have been able to manage that. Huh. All right, thanks for the information. We're gonna go ask around some more. It's that guests I hear. Hi, Grandpa Amadea. We're here to help you look for the guy that's gone missing. Ah, so that's what brings you to these parts. Coming all this way for our sake. That's so very kind of you. With your help, I trust that young man's case is in good hands. Could you tell us a bit about him? Of course. I'm happy to help any way I can. With my failing eyesight, I'm afraid I can't offer much about his appearance. But I do remember hearing the sound of his voice. Not recently, of course. That loss has left me feeling quite empty. I don't think his parents are still living in the village. But somehow he never seemed lonely. In fact, he was usually the one offering companionship to others. He would often take time to visit the elderly or play with the orphans in the village. And whenever someone had something on their mind, he was there to listen with open ears. He always knew just what to say. As the village chief, I owe him many thanks. Helping villagers navigate difficult moments in their lives should have been one of my responsibilities. But he was often the one rising to the occasion. Wow. He seems like such a nice and gentle person. No wonder his disappearance affected you all so much. But, um, you wouldn't happen to know any details about his name, address, or family situation, right? <sighs> I'm ashamed to admit it, but I just can't remember. No matter how you look at it, I should know those things. But for some reason, no matter how hard I try to remember, the information just doesn't come. Perhaps my age really has caught up with me this time. Ah, uh, it's okay. There's no need to force yourself to try and remember. We'll figure something out. Well, Traveler, what do you think? I don't think so, too. Like, the name thing. It's so weird that no one remembers his name. And nobody has been able to tell us anything about his family or where he lived. It's like this guy's been erased from reality or something. Wait, so you're saying it's not that he's been erased, necessarily, but more like he never existed to begin with? Okay, Paimon's gonna need some time to process that one. Someone who only exists in people's memories? You two are the adventurers who just arrived, right? You're here for the Vamara Village Commission? Yep, sure are. We were just looking into the case. I'm so glad to hear that. Thank goodness you haven't given up. I've been so worried the Adventurer's Guild might cancel our commission. My name is Atosa, by the way. I grew up here in Vimara Village. Anyway, I just wanted to say... Please keep searching for a missing villager. I'm begging you. You have to find him. Yeah, no need to worry. We'll give it our best shot. So, were you close to the missing villager? Are there any leads you 
can give us? Hmm... I'm not sure this counts as a lead, but follow me. There's a place I'd like to show you. Is this the place? Under this tree? Yep. I know it doesn't look like much, but this place is very meaningful to me. It's so full of memories. We used to always sit together under this tree and talk. Sometimes we would look up at the clouds in the sky or stop to feel the wind against our skin. We could sit there for hours at a time, never realizing how long it had been. I was actually adopted by the people of Bamar Village. The forest rangers found me in the woods as a child. I was surrounded by such good people and growing up in the village was so lively. Still, there were times when I couldn't help but feel incredibly alone. Alone? Uh, how should I put it? When something's bothering you, or when you have good news to share, you always want to talk about it with somebody. But for the longest time, I didn't know who I could talk to, or if I should say anything at all. Everyone has their own problems to deal with. Even if I might want to confide in others, I don't want to become a burden. <laughs> really? You know exactly how I feel? Aww. Wow, that sounds really nice. You're quite lucky. When it comes to our missing villager, well... I guess you could say that to me. He felt like both a family member I could rely on and a friend who could really understand me. No matter what came my way, I knew I could always talk to him. He was so thoughtful and pure and patient, too. Whenever I talked to him, he would always seem so interested, as if the things I was describing were just as important to him as they were to me. Ever since he disappeared, there's been so much I wanted to tell him. No, no, none of those things matters now. I just really want to see him again. Wow, you two must have been really close. Did he ever tell you anything about himself? Hmm... He mostly just talked about interesting things he saw around the village. He'd share a lot of his own wild ideas as well. Oh, right! I did ask him about his parents once. But all he said was, they're not here anymore. I didn't know whether that meant they had left the village or passed away, and I didn't want to pry. Hmm, still not much to go off of. Uh, look at me. Talking your ear off and still nothing to show for it. I'm sorry. The last time I talked this much in one go was when we were still together. Huh, come to think of it. Every time we talked, it always seemed to be around dusk. Just like right now. Time always passed by really slowly. Even when it felt like we'd been talking for hours, the sun would still be at the same position in the sky. Well, time always seems to pass slower when you're relaxed, right? Uh, what's wrong, Traveler? over there. Doesn't it seem like they're acting a little strange? Uh, the Abyss Order. Could they be the ones behind all of this? I wasn't expecting monsters to show up. If you hadn't been here, I'm not sure what I would have done. It was no trouble. Hmm, now that I 
think about it, the hilly trolls around Vilmara village have been a lot more active lately. They seem agitated and would often attack anything in sight. Chief Amadea doesn't allow the children to play in the area around the village anymore. Hmm. Maybe the Abyss Order really is involved. Well, we should head back and check out the situation in Vimara Village just in case. If the Abyss Order is plotting something, that could spell trouble for the villagers. <laughs> Wait a second. That person! It's... it's Dainsleth! Ah, it's you two. Oh, a friend of yours? Well, I'll leave you all to it then. I should head back to the village and check up on Chief Amadea and the others anyway. Well, see you later! Yep, see you later, Atosa! Why do you always have to pop up out of nowhere like that? Is it your life's mission to jump scare us or something? It's hardly personal, or intentional for that matter. As long as you and I are both in pursuit of the Abyss Order, we're bound to cross paths. Ah, so you're here to investigate the Abyss Order then? That would explain the monsters you were fighting just now. Naturally. Hold on. Are you not here for the same purpose? Hmm. No matter. It may have taken you a while to catch on, but I'm sure you've also realized by now that there's something strange about this place. The Abyss Order is most certainly planning something in this area. Or worse, their plan could already be in motion. So you think the Abyss Order is behind the hilly trail activity in the area? As things stand, I highly doubt that is their primary motive. I would imagine the increased hilly trail activity is merely a byproduct of whatever it is they're really trying to accomplish. Still, the hilly trail activity is causing a lot of problems for the people here. We should stick around for a while and protect the village, don't you think? The best way to protect them is by figuring out what the Abyss Order is truly planning. That is how we prevent further tragedy. And you shall have them. I never intended to hide anything from you. Don't worry. There should be ample time to talk. Ah, so that was the commission that brought you here to Vimara Village. Someone who seems to only exist in people's memories. That is indeed quite intriguing. I would agree that it's unlikely you have a simple missing persons case on your hands. However, any possible connection to the Abyss Order is still unclear. It appears all we have by way of clues is increased hilly churl activity. And that is certainly not much to go off of. Right! That mysterious voice he heard in his sister's memory. The one who called himself a sinner. Who is he? Hmm. Traveler, let me ask you this. Do you believe your sibling to have betrayed you? Hmm. I sense hesitation in your words. After all, you still haven't figured out the whole truth of what happened. There's still hope for the two of you to reconcile. Irreparable damage has not yet been done. The sinner you wish to know about... His situation is different. He and his fellow sinners have long betrayed me, and long betrayed their nation. His name is Vedderfolnir, the Visionary. I'm loath to admit it, but he is also my kin, my older brother. Your brother? There were five of them, the five sinners of Kanria. The wise, Roptatir. The visionary, Vedderfolnir. 
gold, Rhine Daughter, the foul, Sertologi, and Rehir of Solnari, Rerir. No matter how eroded my memory may become, I will never forget their names. One day, I shall have my vengeance. Wait, some of those names sound really familiar. Rhine Daughter is the one who created Albedo. Sertologi is Skirk's master. And the one we just learned about, Dane's brother, Vedafolnir. If he was the voice of the sinner, then the one who inspired Clotar to create the Abyss Order was him. They were once people of great esteem in Kanria. Those who carried the hopes of the nation. They were the best of their peers, outstanding in their respective fields. The six of us, together. We should have been the ones to prevent the disaster. The ones to stop the Vinster King from continuing to rock the foundation of the world. Yet, deep within, the five of them craved something more. They could not resist the call of the Abyss, and divided among themselves a power that could destroy the world. So they became sinners, but also transcendent beings, each in possession of world-shattering power. And when the cataclysm occurred, not one of them stood up in defense of their nation. Not one came forward to prevent the tragedy. And for that, they shall never have my forgiveness. Indeed, if they are not stopped, the day is sure to come when they will also betray the entire world. Of course, as I said, I never intended to hide anything from you. So, Dean, what have you been looking into all this time? I've continued to investigate the questions surrounding the Loom of Fate. It's been quite some time since the initial operation was launched. By retrieving the eye of the first field tiller, we were able to stop part of their plan from coming to fruition. Oh, Paimon remembers! Weren't they going to use it to corrupt Osile and make a god or something? Indeed. However, it's obvious that was just some sort of technical experiment. The eye was integral to their plan, Yet somehow, despite failing to obtain it, they've skipped the experimental phase and found some other way to keep moving forward. There are many signs pointing to that effect. Then what should we do? It's not too late, is it? Our most pressing concern is to determine the purpose of the Loom of Fate. From there, we'll be able to deduce the Abyss Order's true objective. Based on the intel I've gathered so far, I suspect the Loom of Fate is related to the Ley Lines in some way. The Ley Lines? Traveler, you were able to observe your siblings' memories last time, yes? I believe that was due to the fact that the Ley Lines in that area were unstable. My recent investigation has shown that Abyss Order activity in a particular area is usually followed by a series of issues with the Ley Lines. Wait, then our commission here in Vimara Village, the person who seems to exist only in people's memories, could it be connected? It's certainly possible. I'll join your investigation tomorrow. This missing persons case could very well turn out to be the key to unraveling these mysteries well if we're teaming up with dane again we're gonna need all the energy we can get let's try investigating somewhere a little further away tomorrow Tired. Paimon used way too 
too much brain juice yesterday. It's all Dane's fault saying all that complicated stuff. Well, let's go find Dane. We've got a lot to do today. Hello, Dane? Why are you just zoning out over here? <sighs> Did something happen? <sighs> the missing person from your commission. Could you describe them to me? Oh, a uh, young guy? Early 20s? Seriously, Dane, what's going on? There appear to be certain memories in my mind that weren't there before. Memories of him. I... Uh, maybe... Maybe we just talked too much about him yesterday and you had a weird dream or something? No. It wasn't a dream. They're memories. Memories that suddenly appeared in my mind after I woke up. And I'm certain I've never met this person before. I remember... handing him the eye of the first field tiller. What?! Okay, so this missing person definitely has something to do with the Abyss Order then! Indeed. And it appears he possesses the ability to implant memories into the minds of others. Wait then. All the memories the villagers have of him, could they be fake too? Maybe they never knew him at all. But why would he do something like that? Whatever the Abyss Order is planning, an important truth has been revealed to us this morning. What sort of truth? That their goal is still to obtain the eye of the first field tiller. They haven't stopped searching for it. I am the only person who knows its location. Perhaps implanting that particular memory was an attempt to interfere with my mind in some way. Your concerns are not entirely unfounded. I don't believe the Abyss Order is capable of altering reality like that just yet. However, considering their single-minded pursuit of the Eye, I would see an equal level of caution is in order on our part. Come with me. We must check whether the Eye is still in our possession. Oh, so you're going to take us to where you hit it? Hmm. Of course. So you hit it way out here? Not an easy place to discover, that's for sure. Well, let's go check to see if it's safe. Traveler, wait. Uh. We've no time to lose. Let's head inside.
looks like we can't go any further. Be on your guard. I sense the presence of the Abyss. It's the Abyss Order! They're here! Just as I suspected. The false memories were a trap. The Abyss Order just wanted to follow us here. Now that they're in the vicinity, we should have a chance to see... Dane? What's wrong? Can you feel that? There's been a disturbance in the ley lines. It must be the work of the Abyss. Wow, you must be really sensitive to that sort of thing. Byman doesn't feel it. You too. Do as I say. Use that mechanism over there and leave this place. The Abyss Order is putting something in motion. If you return to Vimara Village, I suspect you might finally have the opportunity to locate the missing villager. Just think of it as a way to divide and conquer. I knew going along with your trap would be the only way to meet with you face to face. You risked your safety and that of the Eye? That's quite the gamble, Dainsliff. But I believe that I am the one walking into a trap laid by the Twilight Sword. So you came here all on your own? What about those followers of yours? When the Twilight Sword is prepared for battle, any army I could send would only be marching to their doom. Better that I face you alone. I know you must have a lot to say, but if it's a conversation you want, you'll have to defeat me first. over there. Weren't they acting super agitated just a little while ago? Why are they so calm all of a sudden? In the new world, they bade farewell to the Shrouded Sun. At last, they no longer needed to dwell on their suffering or try to differentiate between various thoughts of blasphemy. Such was the price they paid, and thus their souls became cleansed and pure. Uh, did you hear that? What was that sound just now? It sounded so gentle. Could that voice be... Comforting the hilly trills in some way? Oh, this is weird. Let's check if this is happening anywhere else. Looks like the same thing is happening over here, too. The hilly trills are calm. You see, we're both still here. We've reclaimed an endless amount of time to love. Release your tears. You no longer need to hold back your sorrow. Uh. Oh, 
over there. It looks like they're sleeping. In the end, he whispered softly. Sleep well, father. Sleep well, my beloved people. When you awake, that which differentiates us shall be no more. It almost sounds like a poem or some kind of story. Well, now that the hilly trolls have calmed down, Vimara Village should be safe at least. Let's put the situation to the side for now. Dane said this might be our chance to find the missing villager, so we should head back to Vimara Village before it's too late. Grandpa Amadea, is everyone all right? The Abyss Order seems to be up to something nearby. The Abyss Order? This is the first I'm hearing of it. Uh, thank you for your concern, but as far as I'm aware, it's been business as usual here in the village. Well, that's good to hear. Oh, also, you didn't happen to come across any clues about the missing villager while we were gone, did you? Hmm? Someone's gone missing, you say? Who would that be? Huh? You know, the young guy from Vimara Village. The one you've been looking for all this time. You posted a commission with the Sumeru Adventurers Guild. That's kind of the whole reason we're here, actually. Your missing persons commission. Ah, I do apologize, you two. I hope I'm not worrying you too much. I'm sure it's just my age making me forgetful again. At least right now, I can't seem to recall whatever it is you're referring to. Perhaps you should try asking someone else. But how is that? Uh, all right. Thanks for your help, Grandpa Amadea. Something's definitely not right. We just talked to Grandpa Amadea about the missing villager. There's no way he could have forgotten all about him just like that. What do you think, Traveler? Could everyone's memories of the missing villager have been erased again? You're right. We should narrow down the possibilities first. Let's go ask someone else then. Someone's gone missing? Who? Uh, just as expected. Um, that guy you said a bunch of nice things about earlier? The one you always used to chat with? He's around 20 years old, and you said he was a kind, warm-hearted person? Oh, I know who you're talking about. Really? You remember? There aren't many young people who've earned that kind of praise from me. If you're certain that's what I said, then there's only one person who fits the bill. No doubt about it. But why'd you say he's gone missing? Yeah, I just saw him leave the village. There was someone else with him, too. They couldn't have gone far. Strange. Bayram seems to remember him. And apparently he just saw him? Do you think maybe it's not that there's something wrong with people's memories, but that we've somehow returned to a time before he went missing? If this person only exists in people's memories, maybe we're in someone's memory right now. Right! Paimon totally forgot about the Leyline disturbances. We're in someone else's memory. Just like how you entered your sibling's memory last time. That would also explain why we seem to be at a time before he went missing. It's a memory after all. Right. If he's someone who only exists in people's memories, then we're finally on the same turf. But 
didn't Baron just say that he saw him leave the village with someone? Where should we go look for him? Who knows how long this ley line disturbance is gonna last? We might not have that much time and we don't even know whose memory this is! Good idea! That'll help us narrow things down. We pretty much figured out that the missing villager has the ability to... Right! That! Can we try to figure out more about him using what we know of his ability? Like, does it maybe leave a trace that would somehow give him away? If time was allowed to pass within the false memories, there's a higher chance they might conflict with someone's original recollection. That would make it much harder to avoid suspicion. No wonder! All this time in the sky hasn't changed a bit! That must mean time isn't passing! That's the tell of the fake memories! The implanted memories are basically taking place outside of the regular 24 hours of the day. If the memories included the regular passage of time, it would be easy for people to tell that something was off. Like there could be overlap or something. People might start to wonder why they remember doing two different things at the same time of day. That's why he makes sure the memories take place at a specific moment in time rather than over a period of time. The color of the sky coincides. Oh, right! That's exactly what Atosa described! Oh, come to think of it, every time we talked, it always seemed to be around dusk, just like right now. Time always passed by really slowly. Even when it felt like we'd been talking for hours, the sun would still be at the same position in the sky. Yep, that has to be it! This is definitely Atosa's memory. Yeah, that's where they'll be! So, you see, Granny Jahiet was a mercenary when she was younger. She just talks like that out of habit. She's not trying to scare the children on purpose. <laughs> oh, there I go again. Always talking about my own things. Do you maybe have anything you want to share? Um, it's okay if you don't. You, you could also just talk about what you think of me. Oh, I, uh, I, I think you're an incredibly strong and thoughtful young woman. You'll meet many amazing people and live a very happy life. You won't miss someone like me. Huh? Are those your friends over there? Oh, right! This version of Atosa hasn't met us yet! Friends? I guess you could say that. It must have taken them a lot of effort to find me. So... I should see what they need. I'm sorry, Atosa. We'll have to continue this conversation another time. Another time, huh? Um... Yeah, okay. I'll head back to the village then. Talk to you... some other time. It's nice to see you, Traveler. I believe this is the first time we've met. Born into abject sorrow, he shall now become the loom of fate. Your... Kari Bear Alberic. Oh. You know me? That's quite the surprise. I don't believe I've met you before. Oh, I see. It was the memory, wasn't it? Your sibling's memory. You saw... 
The me from back then. This is Atosa's memory. I came here to say goodbye to her. But I suppose I'll just leave her a message instead. Come, let's find somewhere else to talk. I suppose you could call it the realm of my consciousness. I'm someone who no longer exists in the real world after all. As you well know. Uh, it's nothing. I still have enough strength to play the part of a good host. I've always hoped that I'd get the chance to talk to you like this. And now, the time has finally arrived. Extreme sorrow and pain. Hope and regret coursing through your veins. And a degree of abyssal power that defies comprehension. Father told me that once I possessed all those elements, I would become the loom of fate. But despite his intentions for me, I never truly became the loom of fate. I was merely used as a means for its construction. In truth, I died the moment I set everything in motion. The person you see before you now is nothing but a remnant of consciousness left over within the loom of fate. As for your question, the Loom of Fate is a device capable of weaving ley lines. In its primitive form, it can only be used to create and implant memories. But, as more of it is completed, its power becomes stronger and stronger, until finally, it has the power to weave real ley lines of its own. Once fully completed, the moment it gains the power to weave ley lines, it loses the lower level ability to influence memories, but it also becomes a tool that can change the entire world. Yes, I have the ability to control the loom in its semi-completed form. I suppose you can think of it as a form of compensation. After all, its existence cost me my life. Ah, that. I was wrong to implant those memories. I'm sorry I caused so much trouble. Not only for everyone in the village, but for you as well. I just... wanted them to feel like I once existed in this world. As if... I had a chance at life. what you must be thinking. Why would I do something so meaningless? <sighs> but I 
just... I just couldn't accept it. I had to know what it would be like if I had my own life. What kind of person I would be. What other people would think of me. Chief Amadea, Baram, Granny Jahiat, Atosa. What would it be like if I could live alongside them? No cataclysm, no curse. Just a quiet life in a peaceful village. I was curious, so I selfishly tried to have my own life. Even if... Even if that meant piecing together the version of myself that could have been... One memory at a time. I know it sounds stupid. <laughs> After all, my life ended a long time ago. Any chance at living was stripped away from me when I was eight years old. My consciousness left to mature in an illusory world of nothingness. Even the form you see before you was nothing but an invention based on my father's appearance. An imagined version of what I would look like if I had the chance to grow up. I know, but there's nothing I can do to make them find me. If I could exist in the real world, I would return without a second thought and surprise them with the suddenness of it all. But, well, that's not possible for me. Captain Dainsliff? Twilight Sword, you mean? Uh, no need to meet up with him. Things should already be settled on his end. Exactly. As someone who could only exist in people's memories, the fact that I'm able to talk to you in my consciousness like this can only mean one thing. The Loom of Fate has already been completed. No need to worry about Captain Dainsliff. He's absolutely fine. The only reason he lost the eye was because I happened to guess exactly what he was planning. Captain Dainsliff has had the eye inside his body this whole time, hasn't he? His plan was to lure the Abyss Order to a false location, capitalizing on their pursuit of the eye in order to have the chance to confront the princess. He would then hand the eye to you and tell you to take it away from that location. That way, Captain Dainsliff could accomplish his own goal and ensure the safety of the Eye all at once. A very thorough plan. That's right, because in his mind, he had given it to you already. Before you two entered that false location, Traveler, wait. Hmm? Uh, we've no time to lose. Let's head inside. was when I implanted the memory of him handing you the eye. Given the tense situation at that time, Captain Dainsliff failed to notice anything out of the ordinary, and took that memory to be real. I'm sorry, Traveler, but I needed the Loom of Fate to be completed. And to do that, we had to retrieve the eye. I 
I promise I'm not trying to conceal anything from you, but I truly have no idea what the princess is planning. Tavat's ley line system is deeply entrenched in the planet. Creating new ley lines can neither replace nor extend the ones that already exist. In the face of everything they could be planning, I fear I'm too insignificant to even get a glimpse of the bigger picture. In any case, I had my own use for the Loom of Fate, and my goal, at least, has been achieved. You remember my father, don't you? Clotar Alberic. I believe you saw him in your sibling's memory. After he used the power of the Abyss to restore consciousness to my hilly churl form, I suffered from an indescribable level of mental anguish. To comfort me, my father told me a story that this was a fairy tale world where I had to take on the form of a little monster. That story managed to dispel my fears, even if just for a moment. My goal was simple, to use the loom of fate in its near-completed form, when its ability to create memories was at its strongest, to implant a specific memory into the minds of the Hillichurls. In that memory, I would tell them a story, just like my father did for me. It was a story of fairy tales and love. But, more than anything, it was the story of us. I can't change the world. Not when I lost the very right to exist within it. Implanting those memories, that was the most worthwhile thing I could offer. All that's left of my existence is a wisp of residual consciousness tied to the loom of fate. In truth, that trace of my consciousness should have dissipated long ago. My goal was the one thing that allowed me to hold on all this time, but now... The bedtime story is finished, and it's finally time to rest. Looks like I was too late to see Kari Bear one last time. Consciousness is gone, and this space will soon disappear along with it. Neither of us belongs here. That's why we're not tangible. <sighs> were that not the case, I'd love to hug you too. Well, how about a conversation? chance to just stop and talk like this is certainly not easy to come by. Wouldn't you agree? That battle earlier was tough. The one against Dane, I mean. 
I didn't expect that after everything, he would still hesitate to raise his sword against me. Were it not for that, perhaps I'd still be no match for the Twilight Sword. Even after 500 years. The Loom of Fate, huh? I still haven't found a way to utilize it to its full potential. But there's still time before the Heavenly Principles awaken. Yes, for 500 years now, ever since the Cataclysm in Conria, there's been no sign of activity. Not long ago, you witnessed the Hydro Archon destroy her divine throne. Yes? Such a flagrant disregard for the rules, and still Celestia took no action. I suppose that's proof enough of the Heavenly Principles situation. However, the Heavenly Principles will awaken. We just don't know when that will be, or what might trigger it. You could say that. Just look at Kari Bear. He was so pure and single-minded. The space we now find ourselves is a perfect representation of who he was. Quiet and peaceful. Even as a hilly churl, seeing the terrible sight within the mirror wasn't enough to taint his spirit. He brought comfort to the people of this world, even though he was denied the very right to be a part of it. So ask yourself this. Who was it that deprived him of that right to exist? Of course, that's only one example. My feelings about the Heavenly Principles are too complicated to explain in just a few words. <sighs> Ether? You're the only one in this world who calls me that. There's so much I wanted to ask you, but for some reason... I'm not interested in asking those questions right now. There's just one thing I have to ask. One thing I could never understand. Why? Why can't we continue our journey together? Hmm. At the end of my journey, I arrived at a place known as the Sea of Flowers at the end. Do you remember? A long time ago, when we traveled between worlds together, you told me you wanted to find a place in the universe where that one flower was in full bloom. To have a place like that suddenly appear before me. Well, would you think of that as a coincidence? You mean... I miss you too, Ether. But as this war continues to rage, and as I continue to seek that final answer, I don't even know how to face myself sometimes, let alone my own brother. <sighs> huh? What's going on? This space has lost its tether. I doubt it'll be able to exist much longer. In fact, aside from our inability to physically interact with each other, there's something else you should know about this space. With Kari Bear gone, we won't be able to remember anything that happened here. Everything in this space will be wiped from existence, including all memory of our reunion. You're only telling me this now? Fuzzy. Oh, Paimon woke up a little earlier than you, so Paimon will fill you in. 
The villagers said that they saw us sleeping near the village yesterday. They couldn't wake us up no matter how hard they tried, so they decided to just bring us back here. Oh, and Dane came by just now? It looked like he was injured. He didn't say anything, though. Just made sure that you were alright and left. Kinda seemed like he had a lot on his mind, but that's Dane for ya. Hmm, let's think for a second. We were in that memory, and we saw that guy you called Curry Bear. He was the missing villager that we've been trying to find, right? And after that... Uh, Paimon doesn't remember what happened. Wait, really? What a score! Well, what happened after that? There you are. <laughs> Sleep well? Bayram, you sure seem happy. Did something good happen? Something good? Huh. Wasn't anything good or bad, I'd say. It's just that, well, the village organized another search party yesterday. It didn't feel right to leave all the searching to the adventurers. So there we were, searching away, when suddenly this one guy said it all came back to him. According to him, one day around dusk, he was passing by this one tree outside the village, and he saw our missing villager. There he was, sleeping under that tree all by himself. His parents came a little later to wake him up, and they all left together. It looked like quite a happy family, apparently. And after that, well, we all started to feel like that really is what happened. Kind of strange that we forgot all about it for so long. Oh, and we also remembered his name, Curry Bear. Now, that's not a name you hear every day. Would have been helpful if we remembered it sooner. Well, I hope he's happy wherever he is. And we're all relieved now that we know what happened. Seems like everyone thinks Curry Bear left the village. That's probably for the best. At least they have some sort of explanation now. Paimon wonders how Atos is doing. Maybe we should go check on her. If she hasn't remembered like everyone else, we can tell her what happened. Paimon didn't see her in the village just now, so she's probably at the tree. Come on, let's go talk to her. <sighs> hey, Atosa, how's it going? Oh, it's you two. I was just about to go looking for you. I wanted to thank you. I was part of the search party, so I... remember what happened to Kari Bear now. Honestly, I just... can't believe I forgot something so important. He always seemed to appear out of nowhere, and now... he left just as quickly. If Kari Bear wants me to forget about the time we spent together, then I'm willing to try. I've relied on him for a lot of things, but I'm sure with enough time, even the deepest of attachments can fade. <sighs> okay, I'll admit, I'm just putting on a brave face. I was dumped. Wasn't I? Otherwise, why would he just leave like that without saying goodbye? <laughs> you don't need to comfort me. I'll be okay. It's just like Kari Bear said. It's the things we overcome that make life more precious. And you know, if he has a heart, maybe he'll come back and see me one day. Anyway, thanks for all your hard work, you two. I promised I'd help Granny Jahiet with something, so I should head back. Goodbye. Well, that should be it, right? Everyone's lying.
guys can go back to normal now. Oh, right! Weren't you about to tell Paimon what happened after your conversation with Kari Bear? Uh, a picture? Where'd that come from? Let Paimon see! <laughs> 